Hey, how you doing? It's uh, Chris Denman. I'm uh, a partner and one of the injury, injury attorneys at Denman Perlman. And uh, so if you're watching this, you're one of our clients and I want you to, I want to help you understand your PIP no fault claim. Um, as you know by now that when you have a motor vehicle accident and you, you hire an attorney and we get things rocking and rolling, we end up open, opening up a bunch of claims. And, and one of those claims is your PIP no fault claim. So uh, you've been in an accident and uh, it's not your fault and you get hurt in the accident and it's not your fault and you need to seek medical treatment and a legit question is who's going to pay these medical bills right because you're going to the hospital or you're going to um, an urgent care or you're going to uh, an ortho an md a chiropractor whoever they're going to get paid for what they do and how do they get paid right and that's where personal injury protection or PIP insurance comes into play. This is a, a specific type insur of insurance. Um, it's mandatory insurance. You have it. If you have insurance, you have PIP. There's no way around it. Uh, and uh, it, your family members very likely have PIP. It's, it's mandatory in Florida. It's what we call primary coverage, which means that it's, uh, it will jump in line. So if you go to the hospital, it's going to jump up ahead of your health insurance and it's going to be the coverage that's going to be used uh, and it covers a lot of medical treatment it covers 80 percent of eligible emergency medical costs uh, and or it could be 60 percent of your lost wages up to 10 grand uh, and if you have uh, non-emergency medical costs in other words you go see your doctor or whatever the case may be and they declare it to be non-emergency it'll cover 80 percent up to 2500 bucks so it's it's the real deal I mean, there's real coverage available uh, and so what is, what are PIP's eligible medical costs? Pretty much anything that you're going to go see is going to be covered. Um, any medical services and medication, um, if you needed surgery, that would be covered, or you went to um, an ortho or uh, some sort of MD, that would be covered. Got to go to the hospital after your accident, or if you had to go to urgent care after your accident, that's all going to be covered. And if there are any rehab costs, that's all going to be covered. I mean, really what's, uh, and any diagnostic services too, right? So usually if you have an injury where there is um, whiplash or any trauma to your spine and any cervical sprain, your treatment provider is going to send you out for MRIs or for DXD, which are cervical x-rays, some sort of objective diagnostic procedure to kind of really figure out what the heck's going on. And all that stuff's going to be covered by PIP. Uh, what's not going to be covered in the old days, people would get acupuncture and some other, I guess, more kind of Eastern sort of treatments. And uh, that stuff's not going to be covered. Some of the massage and stuff in the old days used to be covered. That's not going to be covered. Uh, but your treatment providers know what will be covered and, and what's not. Um, there is a big time deadline and PIP claim. You've probably seen on some of those you know, lawyer commercials, you know, you got 14 days, you got 14 days. And and the practical effect of that is it kind of scares people and they think that they don't have a motor vehicle claim after 14 days. That's not true. The 14 days is related to PIP and the PIP law, which says that if for you to file your PIP claim, which is this medical treatment stuff we're talking about, uh, that you need to have see, sought medical treatment within 14 days of your motor vehicle accident. Uh, when we're filing the claim, we need to determine who the uh, PIP carrier is. It's usually your carrier. So if you have insurance and you were covered under insurance at the time of the accident, it's going to be through your, uh, your insurance company. Uh, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes uh, you could have been a, a pedestrian and you could have been clipped by a car or hit by a car. Hopefully not. Um, but if so, uh, you, may, you may not have had PIP insurance and uh, we can go look and see. Um, if uh, you're going to be covered by a family member's policy or if you're going to be covered by the, um, the at-fault person's policy. And we'll talk about that more in just a bit. When we're opening up a claim, we, we open it up over the phone. This is stuff that you don't do, by the way. This is stuff our firm does. We're just, I just want you to be informed and know what's going on. But we'll open up a claim over the phone. We always do it within, uh, within 24 hours of you retaining our firm. Uh, after we open up the claim, ultimately the insurance company is going to send us some paperwork to fill out for you. We'll get most of that filled out for you, but ultimately we're going to have you sign it because you got some information that uh, we don't have potentially. And frankly, you got to sign it, um, but we'll get started with that for you. You can anticipate that's going to happen within the first 30 days. Um, 
Yeah, so when we're determining who the PIP carrier is, again, I was kind of mentioning, first we look at your insurance policy, uh, but if you don't have a motor vehicle, then we're gonna look at your relatives. And if there were no motor vehicles in your household, so there's no PIP coverage in your household, then we're gonna look at the vehicle you were riding in if you were a passenger in a vehicle. Obviously, if you have no insurance and, and you're driving a vehicle, and that's a problem, we're probably not gonna be able to have a PIP claim for you because everyone is required to have it. But if you're the passenger, uh, and you don't have coverage, then we're going to start looking at the person who you were riding with at the time of the accident. And if you're on foot, then we're going to look at the bad driver's PIP. Uh, the long and short of it is there's a public policy interest in making sure that there is this PIP no fault coverage available to people. So as long as you're not driving in a way that you're not supposed, you know, if you're not driving without insurance, um, and as long as you're not one of those rare exceptions that we don't really get into right now, um, see if you're in a taxi cab or if you're riding on a bus, um, but if you're riding in a regular vehicle and you weren't doing anything wrong, there's going to be PIP coverage. We're going to find it and we're going to apply it to your medical bills. I had mentioned uh, an application for benefits with PIP. This is what it looks like. Like I said, we're going to get it mostly filled out for you, but we're going to have you sign it and so we can send that to you. Um, in some cases, we're able to send it to you via Adobe Sign or DocuSign, and in other cases, we'll just email it to you, have you sign it, print it back. Um, important thing to remember is if PIP's available, we want to use PIP, right? Because, um, you know, think about what we're doing here. If you have um, a motor vehicle claim, if you have a claim with us, it means that you were injured. It's not your fault. Somebody else drove bad. They caused the accident and then they caused your injuries. And so if you have injuries, you are going to see medical treatment. And that's a portion of what we use to, to value your claim is what your med medical bills are going to be as along with your pain and suffering and uh, your, uh, basically you've been put out. And so we're gonna put all that together to make your claim. But medical bills are a big portion of it. And at the end of the day, if you have medical bills and they haven't been paid, then we gotta make sure they get paid. And that's what happens at the end of your case. And we've got some other videos to chat that discuss this. So if they got to get paid anyways by whatever settlement you get, then we get for you, then we might as well make sure that we use all the different coverages that are available to get them paid. And so one of them can be PIP. So we do this for you, by the way, but um, it, it's important for us to make sure that when we're opening up your PIP claim, that we're looking for any medical bills that maybe your providers forgot to submit to PIP. And uh, we have to make sure at the end of the day when we're settling your claim, if there's any of that $10,000 still available, we're going to go and we're going to coordinate with your medical providers to get them to take their bills and submit it to PIP to make sure you exhaust 100% of whatever that PIP coverage is. Um, and that's it, man. If you guys have any questions, you know, give us a ring, con contact your case manager, contact the attorney that's assigned your case, or give me a ring. Uh, take it easy. Bye.